somewhere around 15 or 16,000 people made it to Tuskegee at one time or another during the war. A thousand of them were trained as pilots. Uh, roughly 500 of them flew in combat overseas. Uh, but when the National Park Service decided that as part of the development of Tuskegee Airmen National Historic Site, it was going to interview as many of the living Tuskegee Airmen as possible. Uh, we made the decision that we were, we were going to treat everyone equally, uh, every parachute packer, every mechanic, every nurse, uh, anyone who had the experience of, of serving at Tuskegee and what was a Jim Crow Air Force, uh, we were going to try to interview for the Tuskegee Airmen Oil History Project. So over the course of five years, we did, I believe it was 826 interviews from people all over the country. Uh, I think we got to nearly 40 states uh, to do these interviews, uh, which I think underlines what a national uh, event this was, the, the Tuskegee Airmen experience brought in people from all over the country. This is not just a Southern African American phenomenon. This brought in people from all over the country. And then they spread to every state in the Union. Pilot Roscoe C. Brown Jr. may have been correct when he said the Tuskegee Airmen were probably the most talented group of African American men ever brought together in one place. 60 years later, when he recorded his oral history, the Hinnon could still recite the dodo verses he was forced to memorize as a cadet. If an upperclassman asked him, what time is it? He had to stand at attention and say, sir, the inner workings and hidden mechanisms of my poor chronometer are in such a sad state of discord with the great sidereal movement by which all time is commonly reckoned that I cannot with any degree of accuracy give you the correct time. However, without fear of being too wrong or too far off, I will say that it is 58 minutes, 22 seconds, two ticks of a talk past the hour of the poor sir. <laughs> oh, we had a good time. Imagine carrying that around in your brain for 60 years. <laughs> right? The fact that that was so important to him that he would remember it until 2003, 60 years later after he went through uh, cadet training is significant. For any of those thousand pilots who the taxpayers trained to fly planes, right? The American taxpayers made this investment and taught them how to do this. Were any of them able to make careers for themselves in the commercial airline industry? And the answer is no. Uh, the one pilot I know of who made a career with a major airline was an executive with Eastern. Um, I interviewed one man who had been a mechanic with United Airlines for his career. Um, the, that's literally it for the major airlines. Several of them did continue to work as pilots for very small operations, especially in the Caribbean. Um, but the vast majority of them who had always dreamed of being pilots, who were able to make careers of that, did it within the Air Force. They stayed in the Air Force. And again, their memories of that post-war period are really complicated because they liked Tuskegee. They, they, they liked being in a situation where everyone on the outside expected them to fail, and they got to prove them wrong. 